This little guy here is a lavender albino. It's a recessive morph and he was produced from a het to het pairing. The parents were from another breeder uh, so I'm really pleased having got this visual that the parents proved out. I got an awesome clutch from the pairing. Uh, this guy here is the Lavender's brother. He is a firefly and he is 66% het for Lavender albino. What is this weird language that I'm using here? Is this some sort of code? Well, let's take a look at what those terms mean, how it all works and how we use this knowledge in our pairings. Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Some of the terminology that we use when we're looking at recessive projects and in particular uh, the terminology revolving around hets can be confusing. So this video is going to clear that up. We're going to explain everything about hets. Before we get into that guys it's time to do the draw for the Malaysian subscriber giveaway which is the female pastel uh, yearling from ARP Constrictors. I don't have very many names, uh, seems like our Malaysian subscribers are a little bit shy. I know you're out there. Uh, so I have six names. Those are the names on there. So let's do the draw with those six names. Okay, we're going to use the random number generator. Change the maximum number to six. And let's generate the number. And the winner is, which is Zai Edu on my list here. So uh, Zai, if you want to contact me, uh, get in touch with me and we'll arrange for you to get that snake from ARP Constrictors. Commiserations to all those that lost. There'll be other opportunities in the future. So first, we're going to need to get some basic concepts out of the way. Okay, let's get some basic principles out of the way first. Uh, every single snake contains a DNA strand which is a double helix and in sexual reproduction uh, this is daddy snake and this is mummy snake we split the helix in half. Half of the genetic material from the male is combined with half from the female and we recombine that in the offspring. So the offspring are half of what dad is and half of what mum is. When we're dealing with recessive genes such as lavender, this will also work for any other recessive gene like clown, pied, exanthic. There is a genetic modifier which changes the visual appearance of the snake and on the genetic code of the snake the gene bolts on to a specific location because we have a double helix every single location on that genetic code has two alleles or two separate locations so there is room for two genetic modifiers and in a recessive morph such as a lavender uh, we need two copies of the gene one on each side of the double helix in order to get the visual expression and this is the homozygous form of the gene a gene on each side homo means the same and we have the same gene on each side what do we mean by heterozygous or het well het means different so in the case of a het we only have one copy of the gene and the other side of the location is blank there is no gene there now we know what hets are how do we make them why are they needed what do we use them for so this would be het for lavender in this particular case only one copy of the gene and the snake would look like a normal uh, there is no visual expression when the snake carries one copy of the gene which means we don't know that it's a het unless we actually breed it so 
How do we get a het? Let's take our male visual lavender and a female normal. Take our Punnett square and because there are only two halves to the male's genetic material and two halves to the female's genetic material there are only four possible outcomes. So we take this half of the male's genetic material and recombine it with this half of the female and we get one copy of lavender or we pair it to this half of the female and get one copy or we take this half of the male's genetic material and breed it to this half and this half and we get one copy, one copy. So when we breed a visual recessive, in this case a lavender, a visual lavender to a normal, everything comes out looking like a normal but everything is 100% het for lavender. Everything is carrying one copy of the gene. So why would we ever want to use HETs if we're not going to get visuals? Well, if I take a lavender and breed it to a lavender, I'm just going to get a lavender. Uh, what if I want a blackhead lavender? How do I get a blackhead lavender? Well, it's a very common morph these days and you could actually buy one. Uh, but the objective here is to make one and certainly the first one that was ever made um, needed to go through this process. So in order to get blackhead into our lavender combination we are going to have to breed a visual lavender to a blackhead. And what happens in this particular case? The blackhead is the co-dominant gene so has a visual expression with only one copy of the gene whereas the lavender is a recessive and requires two copies. So the male is a visual lavender, the female is a blackhead. So we pair this half of the male's genetic material to this half of the female and we get one copy. So this is a normal looking snake that is het for lavender. Or we breed this half of the male to this half of the female and this time we get one copy of blackhead, one copy of lavender. So this baby here is a visual blackhead which is het for lavender. Take the other half of the male genetic material and breed it to this half of the female and again we get one copy of lavender. So this is a visual normal het for lavender. Or we'll breed it to this half of the female and we get one copy of blackhead and one copy of lavender. So this is a visual blackhead het for lavender. So we get two blackhead het lavenders and two normal het lavenders from this pairing. So we're going to select our blackhead het lavender So, we take our visual lavender and our het lavender, which is also blackhead, but blackhead occupies a separate genetic address and is independent of the lavender, so we're going to treat that separately. So let's pair our visual lavender to the het lavender. So this to this gives us one copy. This to this gives us two copies. This to this gives us one copy and this to this gives us two copies. So in this pairing of a visual to a het we are going to get two visuals and two hets and we're going to pair our non-black head to the black head. So no copies, no copies, no copy, one copy and no copies, no copies no copies, one copy. So we're going to get 50-50 split. So this is a 1 in 2 or 50-50 chance. And when we add that to the results of the previous pairing, which was our het lavender to our visual lavender, 
what we are going to get is four possible outcomes. So for every four babies we will get one visual normal het for lavender, we will get one visual blackhead het for lavender, we will get one visual lavender and we will get one visual blackhead lavender. So there is a one in four chance of getting a blackhead lavender from this pairing. That is why we need to use HETs because it's the only way to get a new gene, in this case blackhead, into our recessive combo. Just breeding a lavender to a lavender will give us lavenders. We need to make the HETs first, a blackhead, HET lavender, and then pair it back to a lavender in order to have a one in four chance of getting a blackhead lavender. So that's the reason that HETs are important. That's the reason that we use HETs. And a world of confusion, POS HETs. Now we get into the realms of not just genetics, but probabilities. Let's have a look and see what 66% POS HET and 50% POS HET actually means. What do we mean by POS HETs or possible heterozygous. Again we're going to use our example of lavender and we're going to breed a het lavender to a het lavender. We know from the previous pairing that if we breed a het lavender to a visual lavender everything that is non-lavender is going to be 100% het. But sometimes we, we want to pair a het to a het because this guy here may be carrying a different set of genes to this guy here and we want to combine them in one shot for instance uh, this could be leopard this could be blackhead so we could have a leopard het lavender to a blackhead het lavender and we want to try to make leopard blackhead lavenders and that's the reason why you would pair het to het but let's see what happens when you do pair het to het so again we split the genetic material in half so we take this half of the male and pair to this half of the female and we get one copy we pair this half to this half and we get two copies or we take this half of the male and pair to this half of the female and get no copies or we pair this half of the male to this half of the female and we get one copy. So in the case of a het to het pairing we are going to get for every four babies we are going to get one visual lavender and we are going to get three snakes which look normal. Two of them are going to be heterozygous for lavender it's just that we don't know which ones. So let's remove this from the equation we're left with three snakes and this is now probabilities not genetics. We're left with three snakes and you can go eeny meeny miny mo. I'm picking this one. You have a 66% chance of picking a het. Now a snake can either be het or not het. You have a 66% chance of picking the right one from these three. So it's a 2 in 3 or 66% possible het. You just don't know which one. So you're taking a chance and in this case it's a 66% chance that you pick the right one. If we pair a het to a normal we take this half of the male to this half of the female and get one copy or to this half of the female and get one copy or we take this half of the male to this half of the female no copies or to this half no copies so in the case of a het to normal pairing we're going to get four snakes that look like normals two of which statistically are going to be het for lavender so two out of four is now a 50% chance that you pick the right snake when you pick the babies. Eeny meeny miny moe, pick this one. There is a 50-50 chance that you pick a het 
there is a 50-50 chance that you do not. You don't know from the visual appearance of the snake. So that is where 66% pos het comes from and 50% pos het comes from. So in a het to het pairing, everything that is non-visual for that recessive will be 66% pos het. And in a het to normal pairing, you will get no visual recessives and all the babies are 50% possible het for that recessive gene. Okay, the important point here is that the snake is either het or it's not, and the 66% pos het and 50% pos het represent the probability that the snake you pick, that you pick the right snake that is actually het. The only way you will know is to breed it to something else which also contains at least one copy of that visual recessive gene and see whether you get any visual recessives. That's the only way to prove that you are actually looking at a het, although a het may carry some slight visual expression once you get your eye in. So that's it. Very, very simple. Very, very straightforward. The snake is either het or it's not, and we're playing probabilities. Note the advantage of pairing a het to a visual is that everything that is non-visual will be het. The advantage of a het to het pairing is that you can introduce different genes into your recessive project uh, via two different snakes at the same time. The downside of that is, is that all the non-visual recessives in the clutch are going to be 66% possible hets and not 100% het. Okay guys, there you go. It is important to understand what you have in your hands when you're holding a het and you want to breed it. It's also very important to understand the probabilities around pos hets. An animal is either carrying the gene or it's not carrying the gene. It's either het or it's not. The outcome of a pairing using a pos het will be very very different depending upon whether the animal does or does not contain the gene. So that's it guys, I hope that helps. Calculating probabilities around any particular het pairing is beyond the scope of this video. There are videos also in my uh, video collection that deal with genetics in more detail. If you're interested, you can search those out and that explains how hets work in a uh, breeding program. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.